All right, here to talk more about this, Sabrina Rodriguez, national political reporter for The Washington Post, and Kevin Fry, Washington reporter for Spectrum News, New York One. Welcome to both of you. Wonderful uh, to see you. Uh, Sabrina, let me start with you, uh, because part of what we saw from Harris here was an attempt, at least, to break with President Biden on uh, some of her economic uh, policies. It's still not clear how there would be kind of major shifts from the way Biden has been doing it. Uh, but it seemed clear that they wanted to send a message that they were willing to, at least in some small ways, ahead of the debate, no? Absolutely. I mean, we've seen she has this like delicate balancing act, not just on the economy, but overall on policy issues where she is showing that she supports President Biden, that she backs this administration that she has been a part of. But the big question for a lot of voters is, OK, but if I'm not happy with how things are right now, if I'm not happy with where the economy is right now, how are you going to change my life? How are you going to make that different? We know, again, the polling always shows the economy stupid. You know, that's what people <laughs> care about. Um, and I think really a lot of this election is going to hinge on who people believe is going to help them in terms of the economy, who is going to help their bottom line. Um, and, and Harris really needs to show okay, you might feel the inflation today, you might feel the increase in prices today, this is what I'm going to do to change that. I mean, that's what a lot of people are asking, just talking to voters out in, in some of these key battleground states. They, they might like her, or they might say they don't necessarily love Donald Trump's rhetoric and the way he speaks, but for them it's a question of, okay, but my family and my finances, how is that going to work out? Yeah, and Kevin, uh, one of the things we learned from our battleground state poll out yesterday is that this issue, for Republicans in particular, is very high on the list. It is the number one issue. It's not the number one issue uh, for Democrats in those swing state yeah. polls. Uh, but here was what, what Donald Trump had to say to this town hall with Sean Hannity in Pennsylvania uh, yesterday, uh, basically trying to uh, scare voters, honestly, about what a Harris uh, presidency would look like for the economy, talking about a depression. Take a look. This country will end up in a depression if she becomes president, like 1929. This will be a 1929 depression. She has no idea what the hell she's doing. So I'll just say, Kevin, Goldman Sachs seems to yeah. disagree with that assessment. They were out yesterday uh, with this warning. U.S. economic growth would likely get the biggest boost in the coming two years from the Democrats, headed by Kamala Harris, winning the White House and Congress in this November elections. Under a Republican sweep or even with divided government led by Donald Trump, economic output would take a hit. And they say this would be mostly from increased tariffs on imports and tighter immigration policies. This is their, uh, the Goldman Sachs economic analysts. So clearly Trump wants to, to, to look at it one way. There are some signs perhaps the other, another way may actually be the case. Yeah, I mean, and, and noticed socialist organization Goldman Sachs, if you will. <laughs> the, um, I, I will say, look, I mean, she's kind of trying to do, it seems Kamala Harris is trying to, one, make the case to those middle class voters who, as you were just noting, feel a bit uneasy. But at the same time, she's also kind of trying to hit back on this comrade Kamala uh, riff that uh, Trump has tried to uh, parlay her way through, for example, a lower capital gains lift proposal that she's kind of parting with Biden on. At least it's a very small proposal, but arguably some separation there. Basically well, this, that people should pay lower taxes on capital gains, which correct. is less progressive than where Biden is. Exactly. Continue. While at the same time also trying to make those entreaties to lower income folks and middle income folks with the proposal to help people buy houses and also produce more housing stock and also help small businesses. So she's kind of trying to play both sides here. Yeah, very interesting. All right, let's 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 switch to this topic. Liz Cheney. You all know her going further than just opposing Donald Trump. On Wednesday night, Cheney endorsed Kamala Harris for president. She said she's voting for her during this talk that she gave at Duke University. Cheney, of course, a former House Republican leader, the daughter of former Vice President Dick Cheney, and she co-chaired the January 6th House Select Committee investigating the Capitol attack. This move uh, ultimately ended her career uh, in Congress. And now she's warning fellow Republicans that writing in a protest vote this November, it's not enough to stop Trump. Watch. I don't believe that we have the luxury of writing in candidates' names, particularly in swing states. And as a conservative, as someone who believes in and cares about the Constitution, uh, I have thought deeply about this. And because of the danger that, that Donald Trump poses, uh, not only am I not voting for Donald Trump, but I will be voting for Kamala Harris in this election. So Sabrina, this is something that Republicans have used kind of 
thread this needle, right? Those who are opposed to Donald Trump. And there's a significant contingent in what was the, you know, the Republican Party of old, I suppose, of uh, Mitt Romney and Paul Ryan, for example. Uh, they have, there have been a lot of people who've said, well, I can't vote for the Democrat. I, I disagree with the Democrats' policies. I'm going to write in someone else's name. I'm going to do something else other than vote for Donald Trump. I just thought it was interesting that Cheney is now arguing that's not good enough. We can't go that route. What do you make of it and what kind of impact do you think it has? I mean, I think this does create a permission structure for some of the more moderate Republicans, the, the George Bushes of the world, the Mitt Romneys, um, for, for folks that went out and voted for them to, to say, OK, maybe I do need to give this a better look. I mean, is this a question of does an endorsement suddenly mean that, oh, thousands and thousands of people are now going to change their minds? Not necessarily, especially with how we've seen Donald Trump take hold of the Republican Party, but it does create this permission structure, it does create this conversation. We also saw John McCain's son this week um, announce not just that, that he was switching from independent, but not just that he was voting for Kamala Harris, but that he was switching from independent to Democrat and voting for Kamala Harris. Um, and, and we saw this you know, effort of courting Republicans and courting those people who are anti-Trump at the DNC. So I think this is just all part of a bigger strategy to create that structure to say, you know, you can vote, you can vote for Republicans down ballot, but with the stakes so high in this election, really give a look to Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket. I mean, it's not a surprise, uh, Kevin, that she's doing this. No. Uh, but uh, she also has been, she's hung back further in this process than I think some people perhaps um, expected her to. Why do you think she's doing this now? Right. I mean, look, she wasn't at the convention, like we saw some other notable names, including Adam Kinzinger speaking, for example. Uh, is this the way that she wanted to announce this? I'm a little confounded that it was kind of this like closed door event at Duke University and then it kind of leaked out in some tweets and then all of a sudden it went, you know, made started making headlines. Uh, but I think it, it's kind of like this slow trickle effect that over time, if you continue to release names, it provides, as, as she was saying, a permission structure and a bit of confidence for people that, okay, uh, maybe I feel comfortable doing this. I mean, I spoke to one of the Republicans for Harris a couple of weeks ago, and she basically said that, look, at the end of the day, Harris is smart, she's strong, and she used the word not crazy. And this is a, a woman from a Republican uh, family on Staten Island. So this is not, you know, some uh, moderate uh, Democratic right. leaning Republican. Well, and this, that's the argument that, that Harris's team is really also trying to push. Like, hey, it's it's weird and crazy over there. Yep. It's not weird, not crazy, more normal over here. We'll see uh, what prevails. Sabrina Rodriguez, Kevin Frank, thank you guys. Really appreciate having you. All right. So